Hi, it's Professor Adam. Let's talk about the ligand field theory of tetrahedral molecules. Not all complexes have octahedral geometry. Many have tetrahedral geometry, which is part of the TD point group, with bond angles of about 109 degrees. The orbital interactions of the tetrahedral geometry are important in both organic and inorganic chemistry. The TD point group has orbital sets similar to the octahedral sets, but this time d orbitals have e symmetry and not eg due to the tetrahedral point group not having an inversion center, which is the same reason why there is a T2 set, but not a T2g set. The irreducible representations of the metal valence orbitals are obtained directly from the character table. Unlike the octahedral systems, there are now two sets of metal orbitals with the same symmetry which can now mix, which is called configuration interaction. To determine the ligand orbital symmetries, their transformations from the TD point group need to be considered. As usual, the axes are assigned as so with Z being the principal axis and Y axis of the ligand orbitals pointing along the metal ligand bond. For the sigma orbitals of the ligands, they transform as the totally symmetric A1 set and the T2 set, which can be calculated explicitly using the projection operator method. Now it is time to build the molecular orbital diagram for a tetrahedral complex with sigma-only bonding. Metal orbitals on the left as usual, and four lone pairs on the right side. For the sigma only case, the E set of atomic orbitals is non-bonding and doesn't change in energy as there isn't a symmetry matched pair on the ligands. Then there is the A1 set of in-phase ligand and metal orbitals forming the bonding and antibonding orbitals. The next molecular orbitals are formed from the T2 sets, but there is a total of three sets, two sets from the metal and one set from the ligand. Then how do these molecular orbitals form. The T2 orbitals from the metals and ligand mix to give the molecular orbitals. The ligand orbitals get stabilized forming the sigma bonding interaction. The metal P orbitals get destabilized to form a strongly antibonding orbital and the D orbitals are slightly destabilized. This mixing is called configuration interaction or hybridization. For a single metal atom in the gas phase, quantum mechanically, the dyz and py orbitals are orthogonal without overlap and are normalized. When a ligand set with the same symmetry is added, it allows these orbitals to mix through configuration interaction. This causes constructive interference for the bottom lobes and destructive interference for the top lobes, which gives a lot of density below the y-axis. Looking at sigma bonding, if one of the T2 sulks is considered, there is good sigma overlap giving maximum bond strength. Flipping the phase of the T2 sulk would result in an unfavorable interaction and is sigma antibonding. This is only one combination of the dyz and py orbitals. Another has the phase of the py orbital inverted or minus py. When these are mixed, the configuration interaction points in the opposite direction away from the ligand set, resulting in poor overlap. This configuration becomes higher in energy, even though it is partially non-bonding, because the d orbital was mixed with a higher energy p orbital. These types of configuration are also possible between the dxy and pz orbital and the dxz and px orbitals. Going back to the molecular orbital diagram, the T2 set that started out as pure metal d orbitals is mixed with the T2 set from the p orbitals, which causes an increase in energy, but these point away from the incoming ligands. The four ligand Lewis pairs fill in the metal ligand sigma bonding orbitals. The four orbitals at the top are the metal ligand sigma star antibonding, with the metal d orbitals in the middle. The dz squared and dx squared minus y squared orbitals are strongly non-bonding in a sigma-only tetrahedral complex. The T2 set increase in energy mostly due to the configuration interaction and are weakly metal ligand sigma star. It is so weakly antibonding that the splitting delta tetrahedral is less than half of the splitting of an octahedral complex. In a tetrahedral geometry, 
the metal D orbital split into non-bonding E set and weakly antibonding T2 set, which is the opposite of the octahedral geometry. Comparing an octahedral and tetrahedral complex with the same metal ligand combination, the splitting in the octahedral complex is much larger due to the tetrahedral complexes having fewer ligands. Delta T will be slightly less than half of delta O. Beyond the sigma-only case, tetrahedral geometries can also engage in pi bonding. If the orbitals of a tetrahedral complex are divided into six sets, it will be easier to find symmetry pairs, including set 6, which is the ligand P orbitals, which are not engaged in sigma bonding. Using the projection operator method, the reducible and therefore irreducible characters of set 6 can be obtained. The ligand S orbitals can often be ignored if the ligand is strongly electron attracting, as they are very tightly bound, and as we know, the ligand PY and metal orbitals with A1 and T2 symmetry combine to make the metal ligand sigma bonds. There are other orbitals too, the ligand Px and Pz orbitals with symmetry E, T1 and T2. These are orthogonal to the bond axis and thus cannot engage in sigma bonding. They can though form pi bonds with the metal P and D orbitals of the correct symmetry, the E and T2 set. The T1 set has no symmetry matched pair and will be non-bonding with the orbital localized on the ligands. The E set, which is sigma non-bonding, can only form pi bonds, but the case for the T2 set is more complicated as the T2 set can engage in sigma bonding with the PY ligand orbital and or pi bonding with either of the PX or PZ orbitals. The end result of pi bonding in the tetrahedral geometry is the increase of delta T as E and T2 pi bonding interactions lower the energies of the bonding orbitals and increase those of the antibonding orbitals. The molecular orbital diagram of valence orbitals for a tetrahedral geometry engaged in pi bonding then looks like this. With the E and T2 bonding orbitals lowered in energy, while the antibonding orbitals increase, leading to a larger delta T compared to the sigma only case. The sigma only case is shown here with grayed out orbitals. In summary then, because the value of delta T is so small compared with the weakly antibonding T2 orbitals, the tetrahedral geometry can accommodate all D electron counts. Delta T is smaller than delta O because the tetrahedral complexes have fewer ligands and the overlap between metal and ligand orbitals is poorer. Tetrahedral complexes of the 3D metals are always high spin due to the small delta tetrahedral splitting energy which is always smaller than the pairing energy for 3D metals. In the 4th and 5th row, the complexes will be low spin as delta T gets larger and the d orbitals are bigger, greatly reducing the pairing energy. Tetrahedral complexes are also capable of pi bonding, which will cause an increase in delta T. Let's check comprehension.